Um, so what we did is we came up with this uh, list of functions of an organization. Right? We came up with 16 of them, and this was the first part of the exercise. Um, we listed all the functions from outreach, uh, actively recruiting clients, communication, the publicity, basically publicity through different medias, uh, information, which is how the, how, what is going to be communicated. So the information was handouts, pamphlets, websites, uh, intake, we talked a little bit about intake, which is basically gathering information about your client. Assessment, determining the client's needs and strengths and goals. Uh, referring, directing a client to uh, other locations or other programs, services. Uh, case management, developing and tracking strategies that address all your issues. Uh, planning, that's mostly for agency planning, so conducting research and analysis and developing new programs. Grant development, well, we all know that, funding proposals, writing funding proposals, delivering services, uh, tracking, which was actually keeping a record of where your clients go, so it was more follow-up, some people know it's follow-up, um, as opposed to monitoring, which is really keeping a record of relevant statistics, who came to see you, what ages, male, female, what they're looking for, so that you have a sense of um, the kinds of clients that are coming to you. Evaluation making assessments uh, of the programs based on your outcomes, um, doing some research. Uh, space was really important too as part of your program. Where you work, are you sharing your space? Can you, do you have space, do you need more space? And training of staff. So those were the 16 functions that we wanted people to think about. Yeah. I got a question, but sure. based on the 16, the function, your judgment, which part of function doing well, which part of function not so well? Can you give me some sense about that? Well, um, well we, didn't really we didn't really talk about that. What our, our goal was to actually have people look at the functions of their organization and tell us in which areas do they collaborate, and in which areas do they not collaborate, and in which areas do they want to collaborate. So it wasn't so much are you, are you doing well or not doing well, it was just trying to figure out where people are right now in terms of collaboration. So maybe we'll come back to that later with a little bit more about evaluation. Um, so this was the first part. We, we developed the, the 16 functions of the organization. And the second part was to think about, um, it's a little bit hard to see that, uh, was to really think about collaboration and what are the levels of collaboration. So. You have collaboration from the very basic or the very le lowest level of collaboration was basically awareness, right? I know what other people in my neighborhood are doing. I know what that agency does or what that agency does. It's not, it's the lowest form of collaboration because you're just sort of aware of what's happening. Um, and, it, and we go up in increments. So intermittent communication is the second one, which means you actually talk to people in the other organization and you, and you know what's going on, you're informed of uh, workshops or, or classes. Um, and then there's more formal communication. You meet once a month, you sit down with people and you actually tell each other what's happening and so you're more aware of programs and services. Um, we did sort of, in general, divide them into three sections, a communication, a planning, and a collaboration. So the three in the middle are cooperation. So not only do you know what people are doing, but you keep it in mind when you're doing your planning. So you know not to have all your classes on Tuesday, right? So there's a little bit of that. And coordination, where you're actually sitting down and planning with other agencies around um, programs and services. Um, and then you move on to joint projects, where you're actually delivering short-term projects together. Um, common tools, which we talked a little bit about the intake form, developing common tools um, that you can all use. Um, so your, your clients don't have to fill out a form 18 times, they only have to fill out one. Uh, joint service delivery, um, which is very similar to joint projects, but is more on a, on a uh, formal and a more consistent basis. And the most level, the highest level of collaboration which is a consortium where agencies actually you know, lose their individual identity and become a separate entity to, de to deliver a program or services. So we have these two charts. We have the levels of collaboration and we have the 16 functions. And what we did was we looked at these questions again. So 
in which areas do your agencies work collaboratively? What, it, what intensity is the collaboration? And how intense do you want it to be? And this is what we did. We put up these charts. I only have one and two here, but we had 16, all posted up along the wall. Um, and people were given little stickers, little dots, and uh, they had a red dot to come up, and, and under each of the 16, they were to put a red dot on where their agency is in terms of collaboration in that issue. So, and outreach, if they're just, uh, they have a, a monthly outreach meeting with their, all their agency in the neighborhood, they put a red dot there and they were given a blue dot to say where they wanted to be. So if in outreach they decide, you know what, we should be doing things together in outreach, and they would put a blue dot down here. Um, so I can show you some of the photos. Oh, actually, no, the next one over. No, next one. Yes, so here's the photos of the actual um, results that we had. Um, and you can see most people, this is a very, tr it was a trend right across all 16. The red dots were all at the top in the very low levels of collaboration or medium to low and where people wanted to be for the most part were in the bottom areas of collaboration. For some reason intake people sort of, <laughs> they didn't want to go any more than formal communication. I'm not sure why but people sort of stuck here except for this one lone, lone person who wanted to do common, common tools but for the rest of the 16 or the other 15 uh, for the most part, uh, people were wanting to do things a lot more collaboratively. Um, and so this is intake assessment and referral, and I think I have one more, yes. So case management planning and proposal development. So planning, I thought was very interesting. People wanted consortium, which was, uh, the, you know, it's just, it's the highest level of collaboration and the biggest jump, as you can see. Um, intermittent communication is where people were right now around planning with other agencies and it was the highest jump almost everyone was in here and almost everyone wanted to be here so it was actually a really good indication of where people wanted to be around uh, planning um, this is the results of all 16 um, in one chart it's kind of hard to read because the numbers are quite small um, but we what we circled is where the highest numbers were in terms of where people wanted to be, um, which is a great, uh, so here's the planning right here, which is one of the highest here, seven under consortium. Um, and it was a great uh, visual for us too, and a great uh, place for us to start our discussion with the group. Now, unfortunately, oh, right here. Unfortunately, what happened at this point was that, um, that was sort of the end of the story, <laughs> because the LIP project um, was restructured. So we couldn't actually move forward from that from that point on. Um, we couldn't actually uh, follow through and actually um, do the work that people had indicated. So what we ended up doing um, was redoing it all over again <laughs> with our new LIP uh, Partnership Council. This is the Toronto so see we got a little bit better, right, with the colors and everything, but um, this is the exercise, we redid the exercise in May with our new council, and the council is now, I think, 55 agencies, where before it was about, I think, about 23 or 24, so it's doubled. We doubled the size of uh, the council. It now goes from, our catchment area is now from Victoria Park to Roncesvilles, so it's basically the old city of Toronto, all, all in south, all the way up to St. Clair. So in May, um, we had our very first council meeting. We redid the exercise again with the, with the new folks. But the, as you can see, um, it's basically we have the very same trend, right? The green areas are the ones that, uh, where you are now, and they're basically along the top of the line. And the dark brown and orange along the bottom are where people, um, where people want to be. Uh, yes, sorry. Yeah. Um, it, it, is a, it is a mix, but we do want, it's for the most part senior staff. So it may not be the ED, but it would be, you know, program managers or um, senior staff of the agencies. There are some, especially some of the smaller agencies, um, have uh, frontline staff on as well. But it is really, the purpose is really to have decision makers at the table, because especially when you're talking about things like collaboration and joint service delivery, you need to have someone who can say, 
yes, that's the direction we want to go in. Mm -hmm. yeah. It'd be interesting yeah. from the point that the lady at the back raised earlier to see what the difference in perception is from frontline staff to say senior management. Right, right. About this, just that's right. Curiosity. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But we do have, I think, for the most part, it's upper upper management, senior management. Yeah. Um, okay. So um, I did want to show you. This is the structure of the new lip. Um, as of May 2012, and you, uh, you can probably see that the project that we did, or that exercise that we did around collaboration and partnership, really influenced some of this uh, structure. So the LIP Council is here in the middle, it uh, meets six times a year. Again, we're still uh, required to do a regional settlement strategy and action plan. And the two main committees um, for the Council are Partnership and Service Integration Committee, which is a committee that will be looking at the results of that uh, of that chart that we just showed. There is a committee set up specifically to uh, analyze that information and to um, take the next steps and, just, and make decisions on where to go, whether it's going to be, um, you know, choose one function that, that people chose, you know, had the highest votes, basically, to indicate that most people wanted to do, or the one that had the biggest change, the biggest jump, as the one that needs that, that indicates it needs the most work, or maybe it's a level, it's a level of you know like common tools, which seem to be one that people chose pretty much right across all areas. So it could be that one that we focus on, and we just do common tools in all of the different functions. So that's the co the committee will talk about that. They uh, they've met twice already, so um, they're just or no, they've met once already, and they'll be meeting again in September to talk about um, next steps. Um, so the structure of the new council now includes a partnership and service integration committee and a new newcomer advisory committee, and that's split between um, two of the uh, agencies, Wood Green and uh, Canadian Council, uh, Canadian Center for Victims of Torture, and uh, St. Stephen's is the uh, is the lead agency from there. And we did keep some working groups that were left over from not left over, but that were in, in existence from the LIPS previously: a seniors, a youth, uh, a language mental health and systemic issues. And then these five neighborhood networks are basically the old lit, the old partnership councils. Um, and they're only meeting a couple of times and it's a really more of an informal, um, just to keep people meeting if they're interested in meeting. So that's the new structure. Um, um, yeah, so I also want to talk, yeah, I, I want to talk a little bit about, oh, is there any questions to that? Because at this point, uh, that the project itself is actually, you know, not completed, obviously, because we had to start over again. So it's just in the process of, yeah. I guess. Just want to know, when we talk about local immigration partnerships, they're local. Now with the restructuring, mm -hmm. they're not so much local, they're going to be a little bit more global. So what yeah. are some of the challenges of moving from, I think there were like 17 lips yeah. in the Toronto area to now four lips? There's now four, yeah. So they're calling them regional, or they're actually is called quadrants, one? right? Sorry? Is it RIP? Is it RIP? Yeah, <laughs> regional look, yeah. We, um, like, we try to do that, but yeah. It's that they're calling them quadrants, right? So there's a Toronto North, South, East, West. Um, the, ch the biggest challenge that, I mean, so far is really about, has been about space. I mean, we've, uh, we've doubled everything. We can't find a place to meet. Like, there's just, it's just so huge now, and there's so many people <coughs> involved that before you could have a working group and meet in a room with, you know, five or ten people, and now there's like 30. Like where, there's <laughs> like nowhere to actually meet. So that's one thing. And it's obviously harder to do work in larger groups like that. Like, like a working group with, I think Systemic Issues has 43 members. Like how do you sit in a room with 43 people and have a conversation, right? So I mean, I mean, chances are that it's gonna, it's gonna decrease over time. Because you know, that's a lot of people and not everyone will come. But in terms of people who registered and listed and expressed interest, there, I mean, that's the biggest thing is that just, there's just nowhere to, to to meet. Like people don't have that kind of space. So that's the biggest thing, Jim. I was gonna say in the West Lip, where I'm a staff person, at least in the Black Creek, the former Black Creek, like the struggle has been, or the challenge has been to keep people local agencies engaged in this regional model. So what what is in it for me as an agency that serves this small catchment to go to a regional yeah. structure? Yet yeah, certainly there is, um, there's still a little bit of um, getting used to it. I mean, especially, I mean, agencies that we don't, 
we haven't done any work on the other side of the river. So that's a whole other um, you know, world to us. And the same for folks on the other side coming to the east. So it is a new, um, it's a new environment, right? And there is a little bit still of trying to get used to it. And so it is the size, it's that a, a little bit of a different environment. And, and of course the whole structure has changed as well, right? So there's a little bit less, um, there's a little bit less freedom now, at, at least from our end where we could have, you know, a lot of this stuff just came up grassroots, right? It came out of work groups, it came out of things and, you know, things came up and we said, oh, let's, let's see if we can get some funding and do a research project or let's, let's go off and do this pathways document because it seems like that's, you know, it, so we're a little bit more restricted now because there's a huge council and executive and, you know, we sort of have to go through a much more process um, where before it was a little bit more organic. Yes. Is there space where the four quadrants collaborate? Well, that's, <laughs> that's, actually, that's actually funny. There is, we're sort of, yeah. There is, um, we are in conversations now about that, how that's going to happen, because there is a citywide lift, right? So there's the four quadrants, and then there's the city lift. Um, and the city lift uh, tries to coordinate some larger um, institutions, the universities, the hospitals, you know, some of the, the school boards, um, but also. Um, we're just actually in the middle of trying to figure out how that's going to work with all four of us, especially since if you look at these working groups, probably all four quadrants have a health group and a language group and, you know, so we don't want to all be tripping over each other, all working on the same issues. So there is conversations about how we're going to do that, who's going to focus on what, and how we're going to manage it with all four so that, so it's coordinated, which is, you know, the whole purpose of the LIP project, right, is to be coordinated. So. Yeah, it's still in conversation, right? So this is as of May, uh, May 1st, sorry, April 1st. Um, so it has only been a couple of months that we're still 